Good evening, parents. This is an informational meeting on the Washington, D.C. trip. I am trying to get uh, parents to sign up now so that we can see that, you know, what the trip is going to cost and if we can make some adjustments so I have total number of participants. Washington, D.C. trip occurs during May 13th through 17th, 2020. On the 17th, we'll be getting back at like 8 a.m. in the morning. So if you have other things to do on the 17th, we will be back, but it'll be early in the morning. I do have Remind 101. It is uh, you text at H-A-A-E-B-K to the number 81010 and get signed up for that. I'll send out reminders about the trip and uh, fundraisers and stuff like that. So it's important to get signed up to that. You can register for the trip. You go to www.juniortoursonline.com and our tour code is 20CCRRDC. Uh, you can sign up today. Nobody is going to get charged until September 1st. That's our first deadline. Um, so that means that you can sign up now with absolutely no charge and guarantee yourself a spot on the, on the bus. I'm more than uh, a third full already. So you might want to do that if you're interested in going. Uh, parents, when you sign up, sign up the same as a student. It's parent into a quad room. It should be like $759.00. Um, first payment due September 1st, and um, there you go. Uh, you can link your account with your children. They just need their own username. Everything else for the account can be the same. And then when you link them, when you open up one account, it'll open up your account and your student's account. So moving on. All right, so our first day, day one, we're going to leave at 3 a.m., and because a lot of students don't know what it looks like at 3 a.m., I put a picture in here of the parking lot of Columbia Central at 3 a.m., it's Pretty darn dark. So just so you know that. We are going to be first heading to the Flight 93 Memorial. Uh, students should bring something with them to eat on the bus for breakfast. We will not have time to stop for breakfast. Uh, pretty somber sight here at the Flight 93 Memorial from the 9-11 attacks. Uh, the boulder in the center of the picture there you see is where the plane impacted the ground. Lots of things to see here. Um, and it, it's definitely it's a must see must see after that we will uh stop somewhere for uh lunch and students will be on their own to get their own lunch at like a mcdonald's or taco bell and then we're moving on to gettysburg we're going to do a short two-hour tour of gettysburg it's the most significant battle uh that has been studied more than any other battle in u.s history some important highlights that we'll probably be getting off the bus is at uh, where Pickett's Charge occurred. That's a picture on the left. Devil's Den, picture on the right. I'd love to be able to get off at Devil's Den and have the kids wander around that area. And Little Round Top, love to see those areas. After the tour of the battlefield, we will stop at Pickett's Charge Buffet and have dinner. And then after the dinner, we are going to go on a ghost tour. So ghost tour will be split up into groups and... Uh, leaders will take us through the town of Gettysburg telling us some ghost stories, a lot of them relevant to the Battle of Gettysburg and some not, um, but pay special attention to Jenny Wade in the center who is the only civilian casualty during the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, after that we will go spend uh, a night, one night in this hotel in Gettysburg. Uh, that saves us an hour. It's driving time later in the trip because we're not going to go into D.C. and then go back out for Day two, first thing, get up early in the morning. We want to be at Fort McHenry for the raising of the flag. Um, Fort McHenry is where the Spire Stangle Banner was written. Well, actually written during the battle at Fort McHenry. Uh, interesting thing to see um, and uh, critical for U.S. history. Uh, on our way back or going into Washington, D.C., um, we will hit the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center, that's where they keep all the large aircraft for the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum that they cannot fit in D.C. because D.C.'s building is actually quite small. So it is a huge facility, uh, and they have some really neat things there. So we will stop there on our way into D.C. to uh, see all these incredible aircraft. Once we get into D.C., our first stop will be the National Archives where you can see the U.S. Constitution in the center, top, between two guards, on the bottom, between two guards. And uh, no electronic devices allowed here. It will not look like this. It will be very 
dark. I don't know what they did to this picture to make it so bright, but it is a very dark scene because they're trying to protect these documents from withering away into nothing. Uh, on your way in, you'll be able to see Magna Carta. That is the agreement that was written in England in 1285 that said a king is not above the law. And, you know, we take that to heart. Uh, in, uh, on the right on the bottom, I'm sorry, on the left on the bottom is the Declaration of Independence. U.S. Constitution's in the center. And on the right is the Bill of Rights. Uh, much more documents and displays down below, but this is the main attraction that we're going to the National Archives for. Memorials that we will then hit after we have dinner at the National Palace. We're going to see Einstein's Memorial, uh, Martin Luther King's Memorial, Abraham Lincoln's Memorial, and the Korean War Memorial. Oh, and of course, the Vietnam Memorial. Uh, this is a place where it's really easy for students to get separated, so this is one that we're really keeping track of all of our students, making sure we're in the right spot, because there will be tens of thousands of people there. It's just, it's just incredible. Oh, and not, let me not forget the World War II Memorial. We'll also go see there. That is the largest of the memorials that we will go see. Um, we'll spend a night in Washington, D.C. In, in our second hotel, and that's the hotel we'll stay in for the remainder of the trip. And on, D, on day three, we get up and we go to the Capitol Building. In the Capitol Building, we should meet up with our representative, Tim Wahlberg. Um, and hopefully, I'm trying to get... Uh, Mr. Wahlberg or Representative Wahlberg to do a rotunda tour, uh, which can only be done if your representative from Congress does it. And it has to be a small group, um, so it's something that we'll arrange ahead of time and see who's interested in that. You miss out on the regular tour if you do the rotunda tour. Uh, and then we'll have lunch right there at the Capitol Building, a uh, nice place to eat. Uh, so that'll be fun. After that, we'll go down to Embassy Row and then we're going to the National Cathedral. National Cathedral took 83 years to build, and there is so much cool stuff in it. You would not, uh, it's a church. You won't believe everything they have in there. The gargoyles, just to give you a hint of what's going on, the gargoyles, the, the church wants to invite people in. They want to attract people to the church. So they do things around the building to get other people to come in. So you'll see that we have here one of the gargoyles is a baby crying, holding a little truck. And then you have an alien from the movie Aliens. And then, of course, probably the most famous Darth Vader is on the church. I mean, how cool is that? How could you not want to go see that? Okay. After that, we will go to Arlington Cemetery. Uh, it is the, most, the nation's most prestigious cemetery. Um, we will be looking for, or we will see, uh, John F. Kennedy's Eternal Flame, his grave site, which is in the upper right um, I would like to swing by and see United States colored troops from the Civil War, uh, troops that were buried that were colored troops from the Civil War only. Um, Arlington House, which is bottom left, that's General Lee's house where he used to live before we made his farm a cemetery. And then Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers. Interesting. Nope, there's more than one. There is the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers that everybody goes to see, which is top center. And then directly below it, there is a tomb of unknown soldiers from the Civil War. Soldiers that could not be identified, and they buried them all in the same place. Uh, that is something that you have to look for, but I will be pointing out to students. Now, when we go there, it's a very somber event. And the guards there, they don't mess around. And this is an example of what may happen. You could hear in the background that it sounded like a bunch of gentlemen were laughing and giggling around, and they do not tolerate that at all. But watching these guards, pretty remarkable. These are very dedicated uh, soldiers. They make a vow that they will never drink or curse for the remainder of their lives in order to keep their badge. Pretty incredible. After that, we are going to have dinner at the Pentagon City Mall. And then we'll go on to the Pentagon Memorial. And I'll make videos telling you more about the memorials, but it's, it's another somber uh, memorial. 
And then we'll move on to hit the Jefferson and Franklin Delano Roosevelt memorials that evening. So I'll be hitting a lot of memorials in Washington, D.C., but not all in one night. On day four, uh, we start day four getting up early, traveling to near Alexandriaville. We're going to Mount Vernon, that is George Washington's estate. So you can see the home that George Washington lived in. Uh, on the bottom there on the left, you can see George Washington's crypt. So you can actually get very close to George. And there is also uh, a slave memorial there also um, for all George Washington's slaves who he had promised that he would free uh, when him and Martha died. And after George had passed, Martha decided to let the, the slaves get their freedom early. So there that is. Uh, on our way back into Washington, D.C., we'll stop at the Air Force Memorial, uh, pictured on the left, and the Iwo Jima Memorial for the Marine Corps, pictured on the right. Then we hit the Smithsonian's, and oh, the Smithsonian's, there are so many of them. African Art Museum, both traditional African art and African American art from uh, today. Uh, there's the Air and Space Museum. Now remember, we hit the big one on the outskirts. But in this one, they have the Wright Flyer, where the Wright brothers uh, flew around on their flyer. The Spirit of St. Louis, the first plane to cross the Atlantic Ocean. One man, no stops. Um, they have a moon rock that you can see in the center there. Guys touching the moon rock. And a Apollo Metal, uh 11 module. And the Hubble Space Telescope test vehicle. So what that looks like from on the ground when it's up orbiting the earth. Um, next, uh, you, of course, American History Museum is one that I would encourage you to go to. The Star Spangled Banner is there. George Washington's uniform is there. There's ruby red shoes from the Wizard of Oz, the Muppets, a $5,000 bill. You can't use the $5,000 bill, just so you know. We don't make them uh, anywhere. C-3PO is there. And, of course, lots of war exhibits about that the United States has been involved in. Uh, American Indian Museum is there, uh, which uh, covers both the northern and southern hemispheres of America, um, North and South America. Freer Art Gallery has a lot of art going back from Neolithic times, from when first, humans first started making art, goes through all the major, uh, not all, well, yeah, I'm sure they do, all major um, cultures, Chinese, Indian, Islamic, Japanese, Korean, and evidently, there's this Whistler's Peacock Room that is just supposed to be mind-blowing, extraordinary. Um, haven't been there because it's not really my thing, but some students may really like that. Uh, the Herschel Museum of Sculpture Garden. Um, all kinds of neat sculptures are in here. I haven't been in the museum itself, but I have wandered on the outside, and some of these sculptures are quite extraordinary. African American History and Culture Museum. This is rather new. It's only been around for a couple of years. And big thing that I found that they're carrying there, if you look on the right, that is Nate Turner's Bible. Nate Turner that led a slave revolt. Uh, pretty incredible story all on its own. That's his actual Bible, which is pretty neat that it's, that it's there. Worth the trip just to see that. Uh, then you have Natural History Museum, where they have lots of stuff. If the kids get lonely, they can go see their mummy. <laughs> and there's the Hope Diamond in the center on the top there. You can see that giant squids are on display. And, of course, you've got to have dinosaurs, Natural History Museum. Uh, the Sackler Museum that is, exhibits Asian art. It's also there to see. And the Smithsonian Castle looks really cool. You may want to go inside, but it's pretty much just information center because I went inside thought it would be really cool. But it just looks cool. Not, not that cool. Just take a picture and keep walking. Now, while this is going on, visiting the Smithsonian's, I will have an excursion tour if you want to go. This is not required at all. It's not part of the trip. It's just, you know, an extra. You're going to miss out on Smithsonian time. But we can go to Ford's Theater. It's just two blocks up the street. We will be walking there. Uh, and uh, you miss out on time. But you can see where the theater where Abraham Lincoln was shot. Um, you can see the bed that he died in. You can see on display the Diger John Wilkes Booth and the pistol John Wilkes Booth used um, in his assassination of Abraham Lincoln. So we will have that possibility. Now, 
On our way out of town that night, uh, we will either do the Dance River Cruise, which is very similar to the Detroit Cruise, except they have uh, a dance floor and music, and we eat while, while they're going on a tour. Or the Medieval Times. We may stop there on our way out of town. Um, not sure which one is going to work better with our time schedule. I'm thinking Medieval Times may actually work better, give us another hour in the Smithsonian, but I have to really work that out yet. So that is the tour. Big things, be safe. We are going to see a lot of things. It is a fast-paced tour. We're go, 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 go. When you get home on Sunday morning, you're going to want to sleep for all of Sunday. So want to have a great trip, want to be safe, and sign up today. Thanks.